Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Thursday, September 5th, 2019. I hope everyone is having or has been having a great week so far. Um, it's been an interesting one. Yesterday was a pretty interesting day. Oh, but uh, also, I want to say before I go any further, um, it seems that things are a little extra noisy across the street today. They are in the process of removing metal objects or metal products from the building that they tore down. And it's so crazy because as they were going through the, like, you know, the demolition process here, I didn't realize that they were actually sorting things. <laughs> that's, so, that's so awesome. I hope... I hope all of that metal is going to be recycled. That would be fantastic, which it looks like it would be because it's, um, it's been, anyway, it's been sorted out. But anyway, I just want to say um, things may be a little extra noisy today just because they're dealing with metal products and those are pretty freaking noisy. Okay, um, so getting back into it. Yesterday was a really tough day for me personally. Um, and I know many, uh, a few, uh, a few others of you mentioned that you had been feeling the heavy energies. Uh, some of you were saying for a few days now, for the week, blah, blah, blah. Um, it really came to a head for me yesterday. Uh, and I really had to take the day to just sit with my emotions, sit with what I was feeling and just move through them, process them, you know, feel them, acknowledge them, and then work my way out of them. Um, uh, and it's interesting because I did end up, at the end of the day, um, I had gotten inspired to make my favorite meal for dinner. Um, and I, so I, um, you know, I had to go to the store to get some stuff. So as I was on my way to the store, I decided to start listening to some Abraham Hicks um, videos. And I love Abraham. Abraham is so funny. But I have been, I used to listen to Abraham Hicks for the longest time uh, years ago before um, I really became activated and like really like super awakened enough and aware enough to start, you know, my channel and all that and to you know leave my ex and go through that whole transformation and it was so helpful and I I really I got a much deeper understanding of what Abraham has been trying to teach us or bring forward for us yesterday I highly recommend that if you haven't checked any of that out um, invest in it go for it buy some of the recordings um, by uh, you know of their events just maybe watch some of the stuff on YouTube or whatever it's so incredibly helpful um, so then today as I was settling into the energies and uh, I started channeling and immediately immediately the color was orange and I heard emotional body of existence so the message for today what we're going to be talking about today apparently is uh, healing your emotional body what's going on in your emotional body um, and then there was another color oh it was pink and I heard loving yourself unconditionally so I was like all right all right spirit so uh, that was all before I actually really started shuffling so then I started shuffling and the first card that came out in your pre shuffle energies here for the day you do have the eight of swords and this came out yesterday and it was this side also okay um, and it's about breaking yourself free. And as soon as this card came out, I started hearing the song, Fly Like an Eagle. Do you see? Do you see that eagle there? Do you see how free the eagle is? And so I was just, I was grooving with it. And I was like, all right, okay, I get it, spirit. And as I was singing that song, then it came to the part where, oh, yeah, there's a solution. And the Eight of Wands came out. <laughs> Look at that. Clear open space, clear, open communication. This is about communication with yourself. This is about, and it's funny because I stopped there because I was guided to stop there. And then I was looking at the cards and I was like, but what, what is this eight of wands? The eight of wands, the message of the eight of wands for me as a reader tends to be a bit obscure because in my opinion, it, or at least how it feels to me, it can mean many different things, right? So I tend to 
feel like I need gr further clarification, but no, I don't. Because this is about allowing yourself to be free, allowing yourself to communicate freely, to express yourself freely, to move freely, to be free, okay? The Eight of Wands absolutely would be the antithesis or the complete opposite of the Eight of Swords, all right? This is about freeing yourselves. And I'm hearing and I'm feeling, and I guess, I guess what I'm going through is very, is very much connected to what the collective is going through. That would totally make sense, even though what I was feeling or experiencing yesterday was very much my own energies moving through my own situation purging my own situation blah 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 whatnot whatever i do feel like on a collective scale we are many of us are going through very very similar things right five 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 on the counter um but our we we have gotten so tied up and what I'm feeling is this: we're, we're tied up, but for so many different reasons. I mean, it, I really couldn't even sit here and list all of them because it's all very different for, all, for each of us. So, you know, all of our situations are unique, and yet they're not different at the same time. There's a common denominator here. And what I feel like this common denominator is, is society, is social norms, is social standards, is needing to conform or feeling like we have to fit in in a way that other people find acceptable not fit in because we have found a niche or we are 100 percent completely authentic whatnot whatever fitting in just for the sake of fitting in that is what gets us here eight of swords energy okay and we're needing to break free of that and allow ourselves to be free Okay, Eight of Wands. Now, overall energy, you have the High Priestess with the Knight of Pentacles underneath. So what this overall energy is saying to me is, um, is that this is a learning process. This is the, 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 so the High Priestess and the Hierophant are very much counterpart energies in the major arcana, okay? And the, hi the Hierophant does represent teaching and learning specifically. But I also see the High Priestess as learning. Could be teaching and learning as well, but often, when it most, more, more times than not, when it is the High Priestess, it's about you learning, gaining downloads or information or insight from the universe, your higher self, whatnot, whatever, okay? And what the High Priestess is representing here for us is the, the guidance that allows us to not only understand the laws of the universe and energy and the fact that we are multi-dimensional eternal beings and all that stuff but it also helped she also helps us understand ourselves at our core which makes perfect sense because we are the universe right and so if she's teaching us about the universe obviously she's teaching us about ourselves okay this is a slow and steady process knight of pentacles in no way is she even remotely suggesting that we rush this situation why because time is an illusion and we are immortal we have literally all eternity to figure this out to get this right and we're never going to completely get all of it because there will always be more to discover now I want to. I want to say yes. We are immortal. We are out at an, at our core. Our energetic essence is immortal. Obviously, these meat suits that we're walking around in are not immortal. Okay, nor are they meant to be at this moment in time, in human existence. We will probably get back to. Well, no, we were never really. Were we? At, I'm hearing at one point, human humans were not really meant to die. Oh, you know, that is right. I did. I have read that somewhere in my research back in the day, but whatever. It, uh, immortality is not important. All right. It's irrelevant at this point. What's important right now is the fact that we understand ourselves. See, look, Ace of Swords, 
Two of Pentacles. This is the realization of the dog and pony show that we have been putting on <laughs> for people around us, all right? And it needs to stop. It just needs to stop. We need to start being authentic. We need to start being ourselves, all right? And the Queen of Pentacles and the Six of Wands were, on, were like on the decks here, was on the either side of the deck. And yeah, look at that, the magician. All right, um, we need to be, and the Queen of Pentacles does represent an energy that is very authentic, very in tune with who she is. She doesn't really give a damn. She's very solid and secure within herself, and she's doing the right, she's doing what's right for her. Then, and, and so that's where we need to be, and then we will be able to manifest. Then we'll be really pulling in that which we truly desire, authenticity. The, the universe we, uh, the universe doesn't judge us the way other humans judge, judge us, all right? The universe recognizes who we are for who we are, for what we are. The universe created us the way we are meant to be, right? So the universe isn't going to judge you the way other people are going to judge you. So don't allow yourself to fall victim to that. Release yourself from that Eight of Swords energy, okay? All right, I'm going to give this one cleansing shuffle. And then we'll see what else we've got for the day. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Thursday September 5th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, uh, five shuffles. Okie dokie. Let's do this. One. For the collective. For the collective. Oh, I do want to say, I just re recognized that I hit a thousand followers on Instagram today. You guys are freaking awesome. Thank you so very much for your love and your support. Three. If you haven't followed me on Instagram yet, I would love it if you would do so. The link is in the description box below, or you can find me at divine underscore conversations. Yes. For, for September 5th and 5. Keep in mind that this is a timeless reading, okay? So whenever you find this reading and it resonates for you, that is the message for you at that time. Alrighty, guys. Let's see what we've got today. Best messages, please, spirit. Eyes are closed, so we will see what comes out here. September 5th, 2019. Best message, please, Spirit, for the collective. What do you want to discuss with us today? I'm going to give this one more shuffle, one more pull, just one more, and we will see. We will see for today, September 5th. Ooh, all right. Ooh, okay. We're going to stop right there. All right. Okay, now overall energy ooh okay overall energy is the five of swords yeah with justice but it's the energy of Amit who is the god on this here running amok devouring souls willy-nilly this is the side of the card of rampant injustice I will say all right. Um, and it's fitting. It's very fitting that it shows up with the Five of Swords here. This type of energy, this rampant injustice, is not good for anybody. 
it is absolutely a lose lose situation now i, I Okay, I was going to say, I'm not saying that this is actually happening right now, but Spirit is saying, no, it is happening. That's why we're bringing it up. Okay, or at least it has been happening. Wow, wow, wow. We have the Page of Wands, same as yesterday. Knight of Swords, the Tower, again, same as yesterday. We have the Five of Pentacles, but it looks like it's going in reverse. That would make sense. We have the Five of Pentacles in reverse, the Six of Wands, and the Fool. All right, so now this energy here with Injustice and the Five of Wands, it has been going on. But for some of us who are heeding the message, who are heeding the call, it is coming to an end, okay? There is an element of self-discovery with this with this page of wands energy and this phoenix from the ashes risen element that is representative here it also also all of the stars on this card remind me or help me rem well yes make me let me allow how they, they they make me think of the stars and how we are made of stardust and how we are cosmic multi-dimensional beings how we are extremely unique in our makeup, in our expression, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. There has never been anything wrong with that. It is the ego consciousness that tells us that being strange or unique or weird or different or not really resonating with the collect with 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 most people or something like that that tells us that something is wrong with that but that's really just not the case i get a strong energy of self-discovery here self-realization but it's not even like you're finding new pieces new aspects of yourself that you weren't aware of before this is more about accepting parts of yourself that you may have been very much aware of but you didn't really allow yourself to integrate for whatever reason okay the knight of swords with that is a defense mechanism, is uh, the guard dog energy. What is that, the Eight of Cups? Yeah, the Eight of Cups wants to flash. Um, so I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna leave that there. The Eight of Cups wanted to come out. And then we have the tower, but you see now, now both sides of the tower are being struck by lightning, okay? This side of the tower came out yesterday in which we were finding that some of our constructs, um, some of the things that we had built, some of the belief systems that we held, some of the thoughts that we held were hollow or baseless or were untrue, okay? There was a mask element to it, okay? Here, we have a situation, the side of, this is the traditional side of the card, but here we have a situation in which the tower is struck and there are two gentlemen, two kings. Wow, that's really... Wow. Uh, there are two kings being thrown from the tower on fire. And there is an eye here. You can see that as the all-seeing eye. But you could also see that as awareness. Seeing the truth of a situation. And it's, so, it, it's, really, it's really quite poignant that there are two masculine figures being thrown out of this tower. Why? Because the masculine energy rep is representative of the ego, and is that it is our ramp, it is our overzealous, overly controlling, overly boisterous egos that help us to create this energy, five of swords, and this injustice. Okay, it is our egos that are amit here who are running around devouring souls we'll say you know symbolically speaking right willy-nilly in an unjust manner creating this lose-lose sabotage extreme competition self-sabotaging energy all right so now as we slowly but surely shed these layers of inadequacy, 
of um, unworthiness, okay? And it is very much an energy of, feel, of feeling unworthy or inadequate because you see it's this side of the card in which someone is outside of the church, not realizing that they have the help that they need if they were just to turn around and look in within, right? Out in, this is literally, this side is literally the side of the card where someone is out in the cold. Now, we need to take responsibility for the fact that we have been leaving ourselves out in the cold. Why? Because we have been allowing other people to define us for us, to define our worthiness for us, to define, define, define our adequacy for us. Thus, we are leaving ourselves out in the cold by way of other people's opinions. Yes? As we release ourselves from this, as we remember our divinity, we remember our innocence. Eight of Cups. Now, normally the Eight of Cups would be, this is the traditional side, right? Where we're walking away from something here. On this side of the card, I, I feel like we are remembering who we are, especially with that shooting star, okay? We're remembering our inner child, our inner divinity. We're remembering all that we truly are with these eight cups here. Yes? As we remember that, as we release ourselves from these feelings here, we find victory, six of wands, a hard-fought hard victory, you could say. A, a well-earned victory, you could say. And we have the ability to take a new leap of faith and start something new. Start a new cycle. The Fool. I really like, I really, really like I am very appreciative of this Knight of Swords energy in between the Page of Wands and the Tower. Because it's, what I'm seeing with this is literally an energy of someone ride, charging into battle to dismantle everything that keeps us from being truly authentic, Page of Wands. I also see the Page of Wands as um, a minor arcana version of the Hermit. Self-discovery. Okay. The hermit represents self-discovery, a path, walking a path of self-discovery and all that. Okay. So we're going to move towards the clarification section. Um, and... I just want to clarify this. This is really all I'm called to clarify. This part. Five of Pentacles in reverse with the Six of Wands and the Fool. Because honestly, there's really no need to talk about any of this anymore. All right? You do. I don't want to beat the drum of whatever it is we're moving away from. You know what it is you're healing. You know what it is you're releasing. If you're not too much aware of it right now, then sit with it. Sit with yourself and just sit with your feelings and see where it takes you. I just feel like most of us know exactly what we're talking about here or exactly what we're facing here. And honestly, it doesn't even matter because ultimately it's being dismantled. Whether you're consciously aware of it or not, mm, I don't know if I'd say that. Um, it would be because it would be helpful for you to be consciously aware of most, of at least most of what it is you're dismantling. Because if you're not really aware of something, then you can't change or fix it, right? Yes, it is happening on a subconscious level. Okay, it is. I'm hearing it's happening on a subconscious level, which to me leads me to believe that eventually the evidence, evidence of it is going to surface. Okay. And then from there, you'll be able to consciously make a change. Okay. Excellent. 
So we're going to talk about this, this, the victory and the new start or the new beginning, the leap of faith, the new direction. I mean, this literally, this fool card speaks of freedom. And it doesn't even need to be that you're moving towards anything major. You're moving towards any sort of new expression, new environment, new job, new relationship, whatnot, whatever. That's not what this feels like. This just feels like the freedom to be you. Without, I heard without circumstance. Okay, there's a better word for it though. What is the word? Without um, conditions. There you go. Without condition without needing to pursue any sort of job, needing to pursue any sort of career, any sort of relationship, any sort of hobby, none of that. This is you just being in what Abraham would refer to as being in the vortex. And being in the vortex is nothing other than just being. I mean, I, I, can't, even, I can't even begin to tell you how much how much deeper I have come to understand what Abraham has been bringing forward for so many years. And if you're not familiar, I highly recommend that you check, check him out. Abraham Hicks, okay? But if you, are, if you are familiar with it, I do want to say that what I learned yesterday is that being in the vortex is not something, not a place that you want to be as a means to an end. The more you try to be in your vortex for the purpose of receiving something like I'm going to go into, I'm going to get in my vortex so I can get that car or I can get that boyfriend or I can get that girlfriend or I can get that husband or wife or I can get that house or I can get that job. No, that's conditional. Being in the vortex is about being in the vortex because you want to be happy. You want to feel good for emotional reasons. Otherwise, it's just going to kick you right back out. But when you are in the vortex for emotional reasons, purely for emotional reasons, then you will start to manifest all of the things that you desire. And it'll just happen. And you won't even be thinking about it. And it'll just show up, right? Then it'll just show up. And you're like, whoa, this is cool. You see? I totally, I finally understood that yesterday. I had never heard, I'd never heard it that way before. And it has helped. I mean, I, this was only last night, so I'm still practicing it. But, you know, it already feels great. It already feels great. And that's actually exactly what I had been desiring. This, all of this Virgo energy that we've been in lately has been really challenging for me. But it's because I am fighting my way tooth and nail okay, out of all of this conditioning that I've assimilated. I need to be doing this. I need to be focusing on this career path. I need to be pursuing this hobby. I need to per be pursuing this job. I went to school for this, so now I need to be doing this and blah, blah, blah. No, no. I don't want anything to do with any of that anymore. I don't want to have to do something because I feel like I should or I'm responsible for it. Now, I'm not trying to say I'm going to I'm, I'm trying to be run around all willy nilly, blah, blah, what not, whatever, and not not, you know, take care of my responsibilities. But I don't want to have to do something because I feel like I'm required to. No, I want to do something because I'm inspired towards it. I feel like it's something that it, that would be want, something I would want to do in that moment. I'm feeling the drive to do it, not because I have to, but because it feels right, because it's in alignment with me at that time. And that is the exact opposite of how we train ourselves to be in life. We do things because we are responsible for it. We do things because we have to. We do things because we should, because we do things because we're told to. Not because it's in alignment with us, not because we feel inspired to do so, mostly. Not because it feels good or it's just something we want to do. No, we do it because other people tell us we need to or we should. No more. None of that. Okay. So. <laughs> with all that said, <laughs> let's get some clarity here. Five of Pentacles in reverse, Six of Wands upright, the Fool upright. Just some clarity, please, Spirit. Just some clarity. 
clarity. Whoa, all right. Oh, oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> so that card that came flipping out, did you see that? That did like somersaults out of the deck? Judgment. Wake up call. Finally, you're hearing us, they say. Finally. Finally, you are letting down the, bar the, the barriers, the blockages that keep you under the devil's grasp. Finally, you're recognizing the devil or the devilish energy for who or what it is. It is time to let go of the walls or the blockages that keep the messages that the universe keeps trying to send you or us from reaching you, that keeps you from releasing the toxicity, the codependency, the attachments, the bondage, the confinement, the fear, all of that stuff that holds you back, all of that stuff that keeps you from allowing yourself to be who you really are, to do what it is you really want to do, to express yourself in the way that you really want to express yourself, regardless of what other people say. Underneath the deck, oh. underneath the deck is the Empress. This is that unconditionally loving energy. The, okay, so the Empress is a beautiful energy. The Empress is the eternal mother, is the eternal nurturer, is the eternal caregiver. You can see the Empress as Mother Gaia. You can see the Empress as the divine feminine energy of the whole of existence. The Empress also represents birth or giving birth or gestation or birthing something new. And this absolutely would represent giving birth to a new you, a new expression of you, a new reality for you. This also represents, now, now here's the thing about the Empress. She is so unconditionally loving that she can be enabling. So you do have to be careful of that. But it's that element here that is needed. It's an element of nurturance, to be honest. Now, it can be extreme nurturance, okay, but in this case, that's exactly what we need. We need to just allow ourselves to be. You wanna take the day off? Go ahead, honey, take the day off. You wanna, I don't know, I, I don't know, insert, insert something that you would, that seems crazy or foolish or I don't know not not maybe not foolish but I, I think you, but, uh, you know you get what I'm trying to say insert whatever that would be there for you the empress says yeah okay let's do that are you enjoying yourself okay then let's do more of that are you feeling good are you feeling happy okay great let's do more of that that's what the empress energy is saying that's what the Empress, Empress energy represents. This is so beautiful, you guys. This is such a beautiful reading. It's so perfect that it's, that it's, that it's ending this way because I had already felt um, guided to gain, to pull Oracle guidance from the Love Your Inner Goddess deck by Alana Fairchild here. And because I was feeling like we needed some messages, some nurturing messages from the, the, from the divine feminine or the feminine energy, the divine mother, the eternal mother, all that whatnot, whatever. And we are ending with none other than the Empress as the overall energy of our clarification. All right, this is so perfect. So without further ado, let's get our closing Oracle guidance from the Love Your Inner Goddess deck. You know, there's three shuffles.
Last shuffle here. And it, thankfully, it seems that the work outside hasn't been too loud. So I'm happy about it. <laughs> All right, closing message, please, Spirit, for the collective for today. There it is. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Gong, sisters. Ow. Card number 35, which is an eight, okay? And keep in mind, we started the reading today with the eight of wands and the eight of swords, all right? Now we're closing the reading with 35, which is a card number eight. And that is on your own terms. And the card, the, the words on the card says, she waited a really long time to be saved until one day she decided to save herself. It was a very good day. I mean, really? I, seriously? <laughs> oh my God, you can't make this shit up. You cannot make this up. 35. Okay, I'm gonna read both of these. There are two parts to the, the, the well, there's three. Um, you know what? I'm gonna read this whole thing. And if it resonates with you, then go for it. There are three parts to this, this definition of this card. There's in the reading, there's spiritual guidance, and there's sac a sacred ritual. I'm gonna read all three of them. In a reading, you are not the person you once were. You know it, but others might not always be ready to let the old you go so easily. Do not allow yourself to be shoved back into patterns of behavior that are not true to who you are now. You have worked hard to grow and become this new self. Believe that she is more real than the old you or he. Believe that she or he is more real than the old you, even if she or he is less familiar to others or may, and maybe even to you at this stage. All that will change and what is new now will become familiar and easy for you to sustain in the near future. Be stubborn in a good way whilst you and others around you come to realize that the new you is the real you spiritual guidance. Others may offer their input, but when it comes down to it, it is you alone making your life decisions. Your choice may once have been to meet the expectations and honor the opinions of other people, but you are aware now that the best choice for you, for you actually honor you. Wait, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. But you are aware now that the best choices for you actually honor your own heart, irrespective of what others understand your reasons or feelings. Irrespective of whether others understand your reasons or feelings. Sorry, I'm having trouble reading this morning. <laughs> you might have to practice not feeling guilty or selfish about choosing to live your life in the way that suits your soul. You might have to be patient with those around you who need some time to get out of the habits of expecting you to do as you are told. It might take some time for them to adjust to the way you are now, behaving and thinking based on your own inner guidance. Stand your ground and reinforce this new behavior until, and the, until you and those around you really get that this is how you are living from now on. You now know that you don't have to wait for permission. You get to choose how you want to feel, how you want to live, and who you want to be. You are ready for the responsibility and sweet reward of living your life on your own terms. Sacred Ritual. Trusting in your own empowerment can take some practice and self-encouragement. Write a list of five things that you do already that are powerful. It might be refusing to have your thoughts controlled by another or exercising your body, walking away from, someone, from something that's not right, or choosing to give yourself time out when you need it. As you write your list, remind yourself that you already have begun your journey of empowerment. You can continue to be bolder in how you choose to express your empowerment when it feels right for you. 
Wow. All right, guys. So there you have it. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.